What's up guys, KS here. Thanks for joining me today as always. When CZ announced the new lineup of P10s, I was really excited. You guys know that I'm a big fan of CZ and I've had a great experience with the P10C over the past year and a half. I've also had the opportunity to spend a fair amount of time with the P10S and have really enjoyed it. Now with the P10F, I had some reservations since I generally gravitate towards compact or even smaller guns. As a reminder, the F is a full-size offering geared more towards duty use and outside the waistband carry. Even with that said, I was curious to see if this full-size gun could change my mind. It shares many of the same qualities as its two smaller brothers, even offering an optics-ready version if you want that capability. Coming in at an MSRP of $524 for the non-optics model and $590 for the optics version, it's tough to beat the value out of the box. The P10F also has 19 plus one rounds at its disposal, making it among the top of the category in terms of capacity. Now it's time to see if the CZ will become the model for full-size guns on this channel. Let's dive in. All right, let's do a couple of quick side-by-sides. You guys seem to really dig that quite a bit. And I chose, believe it or not, actually not to bring the P10C out. I actually chose to bring back the Smith & Wesson Emma P 2.0C. This is the 4-inch model. I think it's a great analog. This and the Glock 19 for compact size firearms. That P10C is just a hair bigger. So I thought this would be a little bit more realistic and you guys would appreciate that. So in terms of the slide, that P10F is going to be exactly 8 inches long. I mean, it is a, it's a substantial firearm. And then in terms of height, it is just shy of 6 inches tall. That's pretty extreme for a polymer full-size gun. Uh, really, maybe not the biggest in the class, but it is among the biggest and certainly dwarfs this compact gun here. Now, the barrel length on this is going to be 4.5 inches, and the width on it is 1.26 inches. So, uh, pretty interesting for sure. And there was one other gun I wanted to bring back. I've been working with quite a bit lately, and that is the P10S. I thought it would be interesting to see both ends of the spectrum in terms of the P10. So we'll line these guys up, the S of course on the bottom. And once again, that barrel length, man, it's just a significant difference, um, certainly more than an inch there. And then in terms of grip, and keep uh, keep in mind that that P10S has 12 rounds versus the 19 rounds in the P10F, which we'll look at a little bit more closely in a moment. The widths are exactly the same. Functions, controls, all that are the same. It's just all about the size. So pretty interesting comparisons with the P10F. Now let's dive a little deeper. All right, let's spend some time with the frame of the P10F. And we always start with our grip texture. Now, in terms of the side straps, we've got some relatively subdued squares going on here. They're very comfortable. They're not terribly bitey at all, but uh, but they're certainly, uh, they're certainly there and they do a reasonable job, a little CZ emblem there. But then on the front and back straps, we do have some elevated pyramids. Some people say that the P10 models, take your pick, whichever one, are a little bit overly aggressive. You know, I really don't think so. I think they're actually just aggressive enough. And you guys will notice that there is a backstrap, modular backstrap system uh, similar to some other firearms out there. It comes with three, so you can definitely change it to fit your needs. I actually kept the one that uh, came out of the box, the medium one, on here, and it's done quite well for me. And then you'll notice that uh, we do have a little bit of an indention here to strip out magazines just in case you need it. And then as we move up the frame, things soften up just a little bit. So I think it's really giving you the grip texture that you need where you need it. Now, keep in mind, and I, I kind of, I enjoy doing Doing this, I'll be really honest with you. Um, I've got large hands. So I've got average large hands here, and you guys will notice there's a substantial amount of grit that's left over under my hand. So there is quite a bit to grab onto in contrast with something like the P10S, where it's about two and a half, two and three quarter grip, 12 rounds in this, it's subcompact, of course, but I just thought that was really interesting that there is so much to grip onto. It's almost like a two-handed sword a little bit, but I found it to be incredibly comfortable. And as we move up the grip, one thing that I've, I've, I've sort of dinged the P10C and the P10S for is how they round it off the back here, uh, just at the very back of the frame. Generally speaking, when I'm gripping this and I'm shooting, every once well, I can really feel this against my thumb knuckle. My thumb knuckle is a little bit exaggerated, but for some reason, the P10F, I did not notice that, and that is really cool. So there's just, there's enough room to get comfortable and uh, and let the gun do its thing, and it's not too big of a deal. And then we have a little bit of an undercut under the trigger guard as well, just adding to the ergonomics of this. In terms of ergonomics, I actually think the P10 is really good. 
Now, in terms of controls, we do have our magazine release here, new for 2019. It is no longer ambidextrous. That was a big criticism of the original P10s. People had a hard time getting these things to work. They were very stiff. So they went with the one-sided swappable, so you can flip it around, but just made it a little bit easier to actuate so you didn't have to wear it in or anything like that. However, they did keep these slide lock, slide release, ambidextrous. It's on both sides ready to go. And I do find it actually to be a little bit stiff but not quite as stiff as the original model. So again, I think their controls are very thoughtful and you can swap the uh, magazine release around to make it left hand friendly, so no big deal there. And then we do have our takedown tabs. Of course, I'll take this down in just a moment. Very similar to a Glock. Again, we'll do that in a second. And then we do have a little bit of grip texture up here just as a reference point. And I love that. I absolutely love that. I think that's a great feature. I wish more guns came with that. And then as we move further up on the frame, we do have our accessory rail for your lights, lasers, chainsaws, all that good stuff. Some people give me trouble for saying that now. I like saying it, I think it's fun, but uh, all of your popular toys. And then a little bit of grip texture on the front of your trigger guard as well. So uh, the P10's all doing pretty much the same thing, this one just being a little bit bigger. In terms of the slide, the P10F does things much the same as the rest of the family. Of course, right off the bat, you'll notice we do have our front and our rear serrations there. And I'll tell you, I find these serrations to be quite good. They're very bitey. There's plenty of meat to grab onto. You can do your press checks, rack the slide, whatever you need to do. Plus, I think they're actually just aesthetically pleasing. They uh, break up the slide a little bit, make the design really nice. And then as we move up the slide, you'll notice we do have a little bit of mill work there as well, just to kind of break things up so it's less blocky. And I think a lot of people appreciate that. I mean, I think it's a streamlined gun and it's a thoughtful design as well. Now, one thing you'll notice pretty darn quickly, and I mentioned in the intro that there is an optics version. This is not one of them. This was one of the earlier models that came out was available uh, to get. Now the optics one is out there for sure, but uh, but I went with the regular one just to be able to get one in my hands and, and kind of play around with. But, uh, but if you're into the optics, they have that option for sure. And then this one also came with the stock sights. I have to say, I'm not a huge fan. These are the phosphorescent sights. Uh, so they do glow just a little bit, although I don't find them to be that effective, to be honest with you. I mean, they're steel. They're decent quality sights. I can pick them up at the range without too much of an issue, but uh, not night sights, not HD or anything. They do have those options. So again, this one's a little bit more bare bones just to show you some different options out there. Go back and check out the P10S video to see the optics ready with the upgraded sights as well. So a little bit of variance there, but uh, but otherwise, again, I think the overall package in terms of the slide is really nice. It's very thoughtful and certainly very functional. One thing I really appreciate about the P10 family of firearms is the ease of disassembly. So in terms of taking this apart, the very first thing we do need to do is pull the trigger. And once we've done that, again, we've got our takedown tabs on both sides. You need to pull your slide back about an eighth of an inch or so, and then pull both tabs down simultaneously. And then you'll be able to take your slide right off. It's pretty effortless. And then we do have our guide rod and spring assembly. It is all steel there. It's captive, uh, pretty substantial. And then definitely substantial is the barrel. I want to look at that for just a moment or two. You guys will notice, man, they're pretty beefy. There's a lot of steel here. There's your uh, feed ramp. Uh, it's a pretty good chunk of metal. Now, one thing I've noticed with the P10s, and a lot of CZs are the same way, whatever they're finishing these things with, they are incredibly robust. This thing, it's got about well, 400 rounds, which isn't a lot, but it doesn't look like it's been used at all. The feed ramp's got a little bit of brass and brass markings on it, but that's it. So they really do make substantial barrels. Now, in terms of the slide, of course, as with any modern gun, it is exceptionally easy to clean and take care of. Now, there are some more futsy pieces as you get uh, towards the striker mechanism and the firing pin and all of that. But uh, but aside from that, extremely easy to get to everything and maintain and clean. Um, and and they, you know, they're very thoughtful. They've done a good job with this. No complaints at all. And then our frame, same situation here. Nothing extraordinarily interesting about it. I do find that these are not terribly challenging to take completely apart if you want to do trigger work or anything like that. There's some great videos out there. Not too difficult. Um, so if you're curious about something like that. But in terms of reassembly, we just do everything in reverse. We get our barrel in and then our guide rod and spring assembly. And you do want to make sure that that is seated as such. And then we'll just throw it back on our frame. And then we are good to go. So that is the disassembly of the P10F. 
The shooting experience with the P10F was a lot of fun. I found the gun to be accurate with the sights hitting point of aim, point of impact at reasonable distances. With the weight being just over 28 ounces, the recoil was minimal and the muzzle flip was slight, even in my shaky hands. The very full length aggressive grip means my hand stayed firmly locked in place regardless of where I grabbed it. If you recall, my time with the P10S proved to be a little frustrating in terms of getting the right, comfortable grip while shooting. That was not the case with the P10F. There's more than enough surface area to get comfortable for most size hands and let the gun do its job. On a personal note, I generally don't find full size guns such as Glock 17s, MPs, and Sig P320 full size to run as well as their compact or smaller brothers. That's actually not the case here, and I may have finally found the right full size polymer gun for the collection. All right, let's take a look at the trigger of the P10F for a moment or two. Now, one thing I talked about with the P10S on several occasions is actually the safety lever. You guys will notice there's a little point in back. That's part of that safety lever. If it's not engaged, it's going to stop the trigger. You can't pull the trigger. It's part of the safety mechanism of the gun. But I've noticed that the point on these P10s, and it's always the same way with the P10s, they're just a little bit too pronounced. So because of my style of shooting, I wrap my finger through, I generally catch these. So I actually sand or file just a tiny, tiny bit of material off this. And I've actually already done it with this one. You, you'll, you'll be able to tell. I mean, the safety is certainly in, it's intact. There's uh, no functionality issue or anything like that. Just enough material to where it is always smooth. So I haven't done it with the P10S yet. You guys have seen that in some other videos, but I did want to point that out. That's what that looks like. I know it looks a little bit more raw, but uh, but it definitely does the job for me. But in terms of the trigger itself and how it works, again, safety lever and a not quite flat trigger, but certainly pretty close. We do have an exceptionally clean take up here. This uh, take up goes right to a nice defined wall. And there's your break right there, about four and three quarter pounds on this one. And then we get our reset. And there's a reset, very short, tactile, audible. I love this reset. And then back out to the start. And of course, we'll do this a couple more times. We've got our take up very clean to the wall. And there's a break. And then your reset, super short and a follow up shot. I'll tell you what, um, once you clean up, the little safety tab uh, in the back of the trigger. These triggers are fantastic out of the box, but it's certainly a criticism of mine. I have to actually do a little bit of work to get it to run the way I want it to. Well, you guys will notice I brought back the P10S for the outro, and the reason is these are the two guns I was really excited for in 2019. I've spent a lot of time with the P10C, so it really wasn't quite as exciting or fun for me. It's a great gun, nothing wrong with it, but I wanted to spend time with these. And a lot of you guys know the P10S was the one that I was after, uber excited for it. And I've spent some time, got some videos out there in the library. Be sure to check them out, even if I could only have one against the Glock 26. I won't spoil the ending on that one. But when I got a hold of the P10 and it was the first one I got a hold of, I'll be honest with you, I was pleasantly surprised. And now having spent more time with the P10C and the P10S, the F has really shined quite a bit. I've been very impressed. Now it's got pretty much the stuff I want for the time being. It's not the optics version. I have plenty of different options for optics. So that wasn't really that big of a deal to me, but it's got 19 plus one rounds out of the box in the magazines, two of them in the, in the box, of course. It's got the modular backstrap system, which is fantastic. Now the sights could be better, they're steel, but uh, they could be high def. I'll fix that at some point in time. But otherwise, the P10F has been great. The trigger is phenomenal. Once I did the adjustment, that was a big thing, and that's a criticism I have. But once it's done, it's fantastic. So I've been very impressed with this. Um, it could potentially be a long-standing member of the collection. We shall see, and time will tell. But I'm curious to know what uh, your experiences are with the P10 family. Any of them, share your stories down below. I want to know which one of the three is your favorite. That's always an interesting conversation for sure. Otherwise, thanks so much for joining me, and I will see you next time.